Hello watch enthusiasts and welcome to another installment of Seiko 7S26 do-it-yourself tutorial. However Andrew, today we are venturing into uncharted territory mm -hmm. so to speak. We are away from our regular disassembly and reassembly uh, pattern mm -hmm. and we are trying to answer uh, one very particular question today. Mm -hmm. What is it? So what we're going to have a look at today is the difference between uh, three particular dual assemblies in the Seiko 7S26 movement. Uh, one being on the balance wheel and then the other two, very similar, being on the uh, escape wheel and third wheel. We know that the balance wheel assembly is shockproofing device. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are the other two on the escape wheel and third wheel also shockproofing devices or something else? Well, let's keep watching, pay attention and we'll find out together. Okay, so what are we seeing here? Well, on the left hand side is a shock absorbing spring and jewel assembly. And on the right hand side, uh, escape wheel and third wheel assembly. They look the same, but very soon we'll figure out, find out that they're not the same. Function is very different. That's right. So we're looking at the escape wheel now. Yep, bit of end shake, freedom to move. Uh, now with disassembling, we're taking off the holding spring and underneath the holding spring is a cap jewel. It's a fairly delicate spring, so careful handling. We're using uh, Dumont number no. three tweezers. An interesting thing to note here, now that we've taken the end stone off yep. is that the jewel underneath is yep. pressed into the bridge. That's right. Uh, and here is the uh, shock absorbing assembly on a balance cock. So again the uh, shock absorbing spring off and underneath a slightly different assembly. Correct. So here we will see the capsule is sitting inside a jewel setting with that lower jewel pressed into it. That setting is free to move inside the balance cock and the spring holds it down. So that's your proper shock absorbing assembly. Different than the escape wheel and third wheel. While we're there, um, yeah, there's another photo of two assemblies, uh, similar looking, but different in function. And uh, any tip of uh, handling the cap jewels? I would suggest very sharp tweezers. Um, moving the components around with Rotico is a good idea as well. Uh, lubrication of escape wheel is into jewel where lubrication of the shock absorbing is onto the uh, jewel cap. That's the difference with the lubrication. Yes, and that is a feature of their construction. So we'll see here um, different amounts of lubrication. Which one would you suggest is the correct amount? I say that second one. So not the first time you dip your oiler into the oil, but the second one is about right amount. Yep, yeah, uh, lubricate or uh, escape wheel lubricated from the top. Capsule. Of course, flat side down. Holding spring. Something to note, and this is with both springs. Yep. That that spring is actually slightly convex, and the con the convex side goes up. So the curve of the spring matches the jewel. That's right. This is a cap jewel of the uh, shock absorbing uh, device. And uh, again, right amount of oil, tiny little bit in the center of the cap jewel. 
So the cap in, cap jewel in, and after that we're putting a holding spring. Slightly larger size, but again slightly curved. So while the assembly looks similar, the function is different. The escape wheel and third wheel is not shock resistant device. I mean, if you drop the watch, the jewel will stay in. It will not move or prevent any damage to the uh, pivot of the escape wheel. In conclusion, there are a number of reasons why Seiko opted for assembly with a cap jewel for escape and third wheel. And here are just two. Number one. Cap jewel prevents dust and other particles entering the jewel bearing, which extends the working life of both bearing and the pivot. Another reason, the cap jewels are functional jewels, and as such they count to the total jewel number in the mechanism. Well, traditionally the high jewel count was uh, always regarded as a mark of quality. The more functional jewels, uh, the better the movement was. The 7S26 movement has 21 jewels, and the 7S36 movement has 23 jewels. Well, if you can think of any other reason, leave your feedback below. Thanks for watching and see you again soon with the next installment of DIY Horology.